It's an improvised Jane Austen novel. Um, so we, uh, it's all done in the style of Jane Austen period costume and uh, live music along with it. Um, but we have no set up plots or anything. So essentially, no idea what any show yeah, is. It's in the style of Jane Austen, but we don't know what the story is going to be. And it's very silly. It's very silly and fun. And the absurd. audience will have to write a suggestion down on a piece of paper when they come in, and one of those will be the, the title of that evening's show. So it, it all comes as a surprise to us. Mm. Uh, I'm Charlotte, and what kind of characters do I play? I think I sometimes play benevolent idiots. I mean, it's so hard to tell. Young girls, slightly tragic background, but I try and mix that. Hello, I'm Rachel Paris. Um, I quite like playing uh, young ingenue kind of characters, uh, but we all try. <laughs> this is going to be a familiar. Yeah, this is we all play completely different things every show. Yeah. That's the whole point. Yeah. Um, I'm Amy Cook Hodgson, and uh, I love playing low status maids <laughs> and, uh, and maternal figures. Uh, but similarly, we, we try as much as possible to be different every show. Yeah, and I'm Daniel Roberts, and similarly, all sorts of characters are fun. I suppose it's particularly enjoyable to play the, the sort of devilish cad with a glint <laughs> in the eye. started about six years ago. Um, a few of us, Rachel and I and a couple of the other lads, um, were together in Oxford working together. And then when we moved to London, decided that we wanted to set up something that uh, was a long-form show. That, what that means is uh, it's a show that lasts for about an hour. It's a long narrative arc. And, uh, and then some other fabulous improvisers joined us and we've been going for about six years now. It was after we. It was after a few of us moved to London um, that it started. Um, we'd worked together in Oxford. It was when we were in London. Um, I think the the very basic idea of doing literary narrative thing and getting the group together was me and Amy. But then it only became ostentatious when it was a group of people fully fleshed out. Fully fleshed out. Yeah. in somewhere called the Round Table, the prestigious Round Table, <laughs> yeah, um, <I'm> <laughs> in uh, Leicester Square. And Leicester Square makes it sound like it was West End, but it was um, just a little tiny, tiny room above a pub uh, in the West End to about 15 people. There was hardly any space at all, and but we sold it out. <laughs> we sold yes. it out. Yeah. I don't. I wouldn't say there were any that you, we would avoid playing. In fact, some no. of the, the sort of the bad or evil characters are, are the most fun to play. Mm -hmm. um, and none of it's because none of it's preordained. We have because there is no preparation, and you just have to go with the title you've been given that night. Um, you have to be open to playing anything at all. I think just as long as yeah. <laughs> as long as we're playing nicely with each other, we're fine. Yeah. I think if because, any, oh, sorry, I was going to say if anything we aim to do the opposite, is introduce more yeah. new characters we've never done before yeah. and not say no to anything, not say no to any characters or any setting um, as much as possible. I was just going to say that because uh, we get the suggestions from the audience, yeah. uh, they often pertain to current news and there was probably a period around a year ago where we had sort of different people playing Donald Trump every night and yeah. Then, yeah. then you start to think like, maybe let's <laughs> use that suggestion in a slightly different way because yes. that can get tired. Yeah. yeah, that's a character you would avoid <laughs> in real life as well. I think Jane would have avoided. Yeah, Donald yeah, Trump. like the plague. There's going to be more than there one. Are, there are, I mean, there are yeah. loads. Um, I, I always like Invasion of the Bodice Snatchers. That was nice. Mm. Uh, oh, have we ever done that, or is that just no? Two? Oh, I tell you, one recently we had was Robofop. <laughs> that was great. I, I quite like last night we had uh, Dial Emma for Murder, mm. which would have been it's quite a nice mashup. That'd be yeah. a nice sort of mm. film noir. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's always fun to see because Jane only wrote six novels, the kind of creative mileage that people are able to wring out of, for instance, a title like Emma. You know, every, yeah. every night there's a slightly different twist on. Yeah. Oh, I know one that. from last night as well that I would have liked to have seen. Someone wrote down Darcy versus Poldark, the Smackdown. <laughs> I think quite a lot of our Twitter followers were quite. Pro, yeah, they're all in that. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. It's because we've done so many hundreds of them, 
it's, it's hard. It's becoming remember. increasingly difficult. But I can remember once in recent memory, um, I loved Sense and Social Media. Yes. Oh, that was which cool. was really recent, which was all about Lady Twitter and Lord Book, uh, and uh, there was Miss Etsy and mm. all different strands of social media, loads of puns and jokes, but. Uh, quite a nice love story about sharing your feelings and everything. Yeah, I was in that and I've already forgotten it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what that's happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think really loved, um, not long ago we did uh, bacon milkshakes and erotic driving. It, yes. was, it was surprisingly That was hot. really fun. Yeah, yeah. That, was a, that was a great show. Mm. It's fun. I mean, we are quite naughty with anachronisms, but it, putting it all into a lovely Austin style is... Mm. is stupidly fun. Yeah. And I think the bacon and milkshake one was particularly memorable because <laughs> at the end someone did a real life proposal in the audience. Yes! Oh, that was she, Thankfully she said yes. Yeah. <laughs> with great difficulty. Yeah. Um, we all just go slowly mad. No, it's, I mean, we're, we have to just be quite strict. Uh, so we plan these tours months in advance and um, yeah, other work fits around it. It's, it's yeah. I don't we know. don't have a social life. Yes, no social life. At gigs all. in the evening. No, I haven't eaten for months. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely murdered work uh, life balance. Just yeah. there isn't any. <laughs> but we also get to do something we really like. <laughs> 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 yeah, there is a plus as well. Yeah. Right? yeah. 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 It, to be honest with you, it, what it generally comes down to is um, there's usually not all of us available because yeah. we're all so busy. Mm. So usually we don't have to actually make that decision, no, do we? It's no. just, oh, phew, okay, you six are available, good. <laughs> yeah. So you can have it off. So we don't often get the luxury of choosing, like, oh, I'd love to go to Sheffield. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very rarely if somebody has family there and yes. they've, you know, 9,000 relatives have promised to come, then maybe. But yeah. otherwise it's just diary. Yeah, if it? I don't go to Leicester in February, my parents Definitely. will. Because I, I, I didn't, I come from Leicester and I didn't do it last year and my family did kick off. Yeah. <laughs> so I do have to go in this room. I think actually because my aunt lives in Leicester and I didn't yeah. do last Leicester show either yeah. and she turned up. And yeah. then was really cross that I wasn't there. So maybe we need to do Leicester this year. <laughs> About it, or have ever thought about no. it. We just started this show and it's just kept growing and we're just very grateful that people enjoy coming to watch us. So we're yeah. very lucky that we're we'll keep doing it if people keep wanting yeah. to watch. I mean we, we have no plans to stop. No, we <laughs> have shows booked up until about June, so come see them, we're yeah. definitely yeah. doing them. Mine's persuasion. Mm -hmm. Um, because I am an old romantic and I find it the most poetic and passionate and beautiful and I like that it's about slightly older love after making mistakes and the stakes are a bit higher I think. Um, there's hope in it. There's, there's hope, hope in it for a lonely unmarried <laughs> lady. Yeah. 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 <laughs> persuasion as well. I think persuasion or P and P. I think it's a bit of a toss up between the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think Persuasion is the most beautiful, but Black yeah. Prejudice is what I would most want to kind of return to because it's mm, yeah. just fun to read again. It's really funny. It is very really funny. Really I'm a sucker. It's a nostalgia thing for me just because I did it at school. I'm a sucker for Emma. <laughs> but I mean, the last time I said that um, in uh, doing an interview thing, the, the interviewer was like, oh God, I hate it. It's awful. <laughs> so divisive. Yeah. But I am, I'm just very fond of it. I remember, yeah, I don't know, just having great chats about it with my English teacher and being really disappointed Mr Knightley's first name was George. But yeah, it's quite, I've never thought about it before. Oh, I always quite fancied his brother. It's just very sarcastic. Oh, the married brother? John Knightley. Mm. Well, not, not married. I mean, only if he was single, obviously. You can't have him, Charlotte. Don't want He's him. Married. He's married. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> I thought everyone would do that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, 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 S